All right. Moving on, our last avoid. This is a later round player. This is an avoid for you. This is this is not necessarily an avoid for me. Okay. Um, our consensus one hundred and fourteenth overall player. That's because you didn't rank him in your top one twenty five. For clarification, you know what? You're damn right. I didn't. Yeah, you're incorrect. I am not in. I am factually correct. No. Consensus one fourteen. The the double threat, Tariq Cohen. Yeah. I did not rank him in my 125, which is why he is all the way down here at 114, because we penalized anybody that one of us didn't rank. Alex has him all the way up at 72 overall. Boom. Which is a joke. Nope. He won't finish in the top 75. Uh, Sure he will. He, he has before. Okay. ESPN has ranked him at 67th overall. However, that is PPR rankings. I would like to think that we we ranked based on half PPR. So I would like to think that good old ESPN would rank him considerably lower than 67th overall uh, in a half PPR setting. His average draft position. The world agrees with your boy. That's all I have to say. His ADP. 122.9. It's fine. I would Glorious. love to get him that late. G- give me an 11th round Tariq Cohen pick. He is Please. the 48th running back going off the board. 122.9 puts him 22.9 divided by 12. Wow. Early, t- or early 11th. Beginning of yep. the 11th round. Sorry, so he, children, learn your multiplication tables. Don't be dependent on cell phones like I am. It's it's fine. He's he's going for the 48th running back. Currently, yes. And that's last almost year. Too last high. year, he was running back 33. I understand that, but he's also not good at football and he has no ceiling. In 2018, he was running back 13. OK. My turn. So how so how is he going to be? Running back 50. Um, so 2018, you hit the nail on the head. I had him at running back 16 that year. Um, 99 rushes, 444 yards, three touchdowns, rushing, a uh, whopping 91 targets, 71 catches, 725 yards, and another five scores receiving. That all good. changed. He was real good. That all changed last year. 2019 finishes running back 33. He his 99 rushing attempts plummeted to 64. His rushing yards were cut in more than half with yep. f- from going from 444 yards to 213. He did not have a rushing score last year. However, his receptions actually increased and so did his targets. He had 104 targets, 79 catches. Uh the yards, oh boy, did those yards go down though. Yeah, he, Since, right. He had eight more catches and 269 less receiving yards. That yes, doesn't make any did. sense. And he only had yeah. three scores compared to five the previous season. His, I'll, I'll tell you what happened. If you guys want to, if his ADP stays the 10th, 11th round, sure. Draft Tariq Cohen. You know why? You just, you know, you do it. I won't. While his pass work has gone up year over year, his running work literally just crashed over that same time. He only has 64 rushing attempts last year and his past game involvement really wasn't impressive last season at all. He averaged 10 plus yards per catch in 2018, which went all the way down to 5.8 yards per catch last season. They little bubble screen crap tosses behind the line that went nowhere. Like that was the Tariq Cohen experience last season. He's just, he's a gadget mismatch kind of guy that I don't think should really even be called a running back. I, I don't, I mean, I don't know what you want to call him. Like his lack, he has no, he has a real big lack of involvement in the running game. And then 
I would say mediocre involvement in a passing game that really only supports one wide receiver. Like he's not going to get it done as a running back. And so I don't think 2018 is a ceiling anymore because the bears drafted David Montgomery. And that's what changed prior to 2019. The bears didn't have David Montgomery. They had Jordan Howard and Jordan Howard was as one dimensional as one dimensional can be. The guy caught zero balls. And so they put Tariq Cohen on the field more to try and be that sort of double threat. You don't know if we're running, you don't know if we're passing. So he got more work. And then what did the bears do? They're like, wow, our running back room is not great. And they drafted David Montgomery. David Montgomery had a higher DVOA than Tariq Cohen last year. I think his Usage is going to continue to increase. I'm just not. He's just a check down sweep pass catching five yards of play. I'm just not. Not not about Tariq Cohen. He had. Last year, he had 12 single point games. He did. And only scored in the double digits twice. It's true. There's any, I would take damn near anything else in the 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th round than a guy that's not going to get running back or work. And yeah, okay. He has a floor. You know what his floor is? It's five points. And he pretty much scores that every week. Like I don't want that at flex. And I think that even if Montgomery gets hurt, I don't think that Cohen turns into like a three down back. The guy's like five, six. That is also accurate. So I just, and the ADPs, man. Yeah, he's going in the 10th round. That's fine. The the 11th round. Yeah. He, he, so here, here's where I disagree with you. He had 79 catches last year, the fourth most for running backs. The three running backs in front of him were Christian McCaffrey, Eckler, and Alvin Kamara. You want to crown his ass and crown his ass. I know that he is not better than all the other running backs that were not mentioned. But I'm just saying that the catches are there to be a legitimate flex player. Yes. Can you imagine if those... Targets went to David Montgomery instead. Well, so, right. I just looked up what the difference was between David Montgomery last year and Jordan Howard the year before, just to, for, for sake. So last year, David Montgomery had 35 targets, 25 catches. The year before that, Jordan Howard had 26 targets and 20 catches. Um, He's a rookie though. I mean. No, I know. I'm, I'm just saying that there wasn't that big of a difference from like one to the other which i would have expected there there might be um i also want to emphasize that Tariq cohen had 104 targets last year which was the third most for running backs the only two in front of him were mccaffrey and austin Eckler. he had he only had 456 receiving yards which was the 10th most for running backs and every running back in front of him that had more receiving yards was an RB2 at worst. Everybody was in the top 20 except for James White, who was 22nd. Did they all put up 12 single point games too, like Treat Cohen? Or did they do better? No, they didn't. But oh. that's what I'm saying is that I wouldn't expect that to continue because I th- I think he's still the... S- I mean, a year ago, I would have said that he was the second best playmaker in that offense. Um, I... I don't know who the second best playmaker is in that offense at this point. I, I just don't know. I also don't really trust Nagy to figure out who to get the ball to either. Maybe that changes with Nick Foles being the quarterback. Uh, if, if Because apparently Trubisky can't can't run that offense. So because of that, if, if Foles is the quarterback, maybe you do see a little bit of a rebound for Tariq Cohen. Um, I... I Chase, I chase the catches. I, I, yeah, you do. If, 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 if I can get the catches, then especially going in the, in the 11th round, I mean, in, in our mock draft, I took him, took him at nine, nine, nine. Um, 
So basically a 10th round pick. I, again, I'm I'm very comfortable with that. I also want to mention that he was on the field more in 2019 than he was in 2018, both in number of plays and in percentage of 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 snaps. That whole um, team was just bad last year. Like it was just No, I know. I know. I I, so I don't disagree with you. Um Little hidden added bonus points, depending on how your league's set up with return yards. Um, he is the punt returner, so you you could get some some small change points there. I'm not saying that's why you should draft him. Pitching punt returners, huh? That's that's what I did. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's just go. Let's go to ADPs. No, hold on. One, one more thing. Playoff matchups. Really, really like the Bears' playoff matchups. Home against the Texans. At Minnesota, yeah. where where they actually play really well or have historically, it's and then week dome. six, and yeah, then I, week six, week sixteen yeah. is is at Jacksonville. Okay. Yep. So I I, I do like their playoff That's, matchups. None of that is scary. No, none of it's scary, and their first six weeks are real good too. So I oh I, my I god, do, are their first six weeks appealing? Yeah, so I, I mean, I think you could see the Bears get off to a very good fantasy start. Um, Allen Robinson, he, baby. Yeah, oh, there's got to there's got to be somebody else. Um, so hold on, just real quick, looked up the Bears' schedule um, at Detroit. Yum. At, at at the Giant, or sorry, at Detroit, home against the Giants. Delicious. At Atlanta. Tasty. Home against the Colts. Oh, eat it up, baby. Home against the Bucks, and then at Carolina, like that. Those are six real good games to start out with, and their last three are pretty good too. So you're already you're looking at nine, like pretty somewhat decent fantasy matchups. I I think Tariq Cohen is has, and yes, he might be a gadget guy, but I I just think that the targets and the way that they use him, and it just seems like whenever they needed a play that they would put him in the backfield because they trust him more than Montgomery. Um, wh- one last thing, just I just wanted to run down his targets. I, I know you obviously know that they're high, but I mean, he was getting more targets than than some wide receiver twos. Behind the and line I, of scrimmage. I, yeah, but I, I it matters, though. Like, here here's a game by game, and I know everybody wants to hear this, so I'll go quick. 10, 5, 4, 5, 7, 12, 3, 5, 4, 6, 9, 4, 6, 10, 4, 10. So, like, he's going to get at least, he, he's going to have a, a, Five to a ten low floor, again. but he, he will score. He, he's nothing more than a, than a, a bi week replacement at, yes. at this point. But, but I do think the, the, ce- the ceiling is there and it has been proven that it's there in Matt Nagy's offense. And so does it change with a better quarterback? I'm banking on potentially yes. Yeah, with uh, what was it? 5.8 yards per catch last season. Like, I don't think they did a very good job of getting him the ball in space that he could actually have no. a time to make a play. And, and their line something. sucked. It was ter- terrible last year. All right, let's talk ADPs. Tariq Cohen or Sterling Shepard? Ooh, I would take Sterling Shepard. Shepard is going four spots in front of him. Tariq Cohen or Jamison Crowder? I would take Crowder. Crowder is going seven spots after Tariq Cohen. That's so criminally low. It's It's insulting. Also, hey, another person for all of y'all to leave nice and low. While you're doing your mock draft, just scoot on by Jamison Crowder for the rest of us, please. Uh, Tariq Cohen, Anthony Miller. Uh, I would actually take Cohen. Okay. Uh, Tariq Cohen, Sammy Watkins. Hmm. I think Watkins could be fine if he stays healthy. Um, so I would guess I would roll the dice on Watkins. Tariq Cohen, Tony Pollard, or Chase Edmonds, or Zach Moss. Those are the running backs that he's going around. Yeah, I would take Cohen over all, all three of those. Yeah, the by, other guys by a pretty are, easy margin. The other guys are backup slash handcuffs, except for Zach Moss. I feel it like could actually be a pretty nasty late round draft pick this season. But 
Right. Just, just the fact that that Cohen was on the field for 60 yeah. percent of plays or whatever that was last year. Um, I, he's just going to have more opportunities than all than all three of those guys. Yeah. All right, well, injuries. That, that does it for our avoid these players while you draft. <laughs>